In this video, we're gonna make an ice fishing rod holder box. Why am I making one instead of buying one? They're super expensive. So I'm just gonna spend more money making one than buying one. And this way, at least it's accustomed to the size that I want. Let's do it. Let's get dusty. So what are we building this thing out of? I'm gonna build it out of aluminum. Why? Because aluminum is light and strong. Is the aluminum that I'm using strong? Not really, but it's light. Uh, I've never worked with aluminum. So enjoy this one. Uh, I'm gonna use this three quarter by three quarter, 16th inch aluminum. Uh, that's gonna be used for like the structure, the frame. And I'm actually gonna, and don't laugh, don't laugh. I'm gonna use aluminum flashing that you'd use on your roof to skin this thing and make the actual shell of it. Never welded aluminum. Uh, I probably should change out the blade in the miter saw before I start cutting it. We'll see what happens. Let's go ahead and just start cutting stuff up. Again, never welded aluminum. This is the first thing that I ever welded that was aluminum. I'll show you the clip of it now because I thought it might be hilarious. It looks like crap, but it's stupid strong. So if I can reenact this without it looking so terrible, we might be in business. If not, I'm gonna have to rivet everything in place, which was the main plan when I started until I realized that I had some spool for my welder that was aluminum. So we're gonna attempt to just tack this thing into place. Uh, I don't have a fixture table. It'd be really nice if I did. If you think it's really important that doing metal work on a fixture table, a table that's completely flat and not just a piece of plywood on saw is important, feel free to subscribe and binge watch a bunch of videos so then maybe one day I'll be able to afford a fixture table. But until then, this is what you get. So uh, you can see that I put the square in there. That's gonna help me keep the square. I'm just gonna try to lightly tack it in before I melt everything, I guess. More than likely, I'm going to waste a bunch of aluminum. Woo! You know, I knew it was going to hurt. Did it anyway. So um, the welds look just, just terrible. Um, I was playing with settings. I don't know if you know how to MIG weld aluminum well, uh, let me know in the comments below. Like, do I need to go fast with my wire feed? Do I need to turn my feed down? Should my voltage be up? Those are my two options that I can control on this welder. Um, so I, I played around with them to try to get it a little bit. I mean, everything is strong. I can't pull anything apart. It feels like it's going to be fine. It just looks like crap. Um, so what we're going to do now is I have three of these giant picture frames made. Uh, I'm going to weld little feet into the corner of e of this one and then I will weld another one of these down here and that'll give me a little box. So it it's the frame is together. It's strong. Um Square wise, I don't think we're there because I had a lot of issues with this. Um, it was really fun because it was like learning to weld all over again. And uh, if you couldn't tell, I'm completely self-taught on welding. So, but if I can clean up the insides a little bit and I'll polish up the outsides, I think it's really fine. So, here's what we have. Here is the frame area, and this will be the door lid thing that's going to sit like this. We'll hinge the bottom here, and we will do like that. So now we just got to skin the entire, well first I'm going to try to grind this up a little bit and make this look a little bit prettier because it looks, it looks pretty terrible. I got a lot of splatter, uh, I got a lot of melting, I, I don't, I got a lot of, I don't know what's going on here. I probably should have stuck with the riveting idea I was going to do first, but learning to weld aluminum sounded like a lot of fun. Yeah. So um, I'm going to go over everything with one of these flappy 
disc sanders on the grinder and hopefully I can clean up all of the crappy welds it's just a little bit make it look a little nicer Right now, very simple, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut all of the aluminum flashing to make all of the inside skins for the, basically all the framing that we're gonna do. So I've got, and I wasn't kidding when I said roofing flashing. I don't know if I have enough, but there it is. So uh, I'm gonna just measure this. I'm gonna try to cut this out. I think I'm gonna try to use a box cutter with a brand new blade, see how far that gets me. We'll see where that ends up, but right now that's what we're gonna do. Pretty, pretty easily. Probably not what you want to sit hear me say when I'm trying to make a box for durability, but here we are. So I ran out of the uh, flashing aluminum. Uh, I forgot to get more when I was just at the store, but uh, I ran out to do these just the small little ends here. So what I'm going to do, and this is actually something that. I just a little life hack for you guys. You ever get those totes that you end up with an extra lid somehow, like this, or the tote breaks? I'll save the plastic off the off the totes, and therefore I'll use them for stuff like this. Um, so if the plastic ends up getting too cold and too brittle, um, I'll end up replacing it with aluminum later on. But for right now, because I don't feel like running back to the store, we'll get this. So I'm gonna cut the little ends out of this. And to do this, really, what you need to do is you need to establish a center line or a straight line. Probably a straight line is what it's called. So what I'm doing here is I'm just making a line with a piece of trim that I'm going to base all of my measurements off of. And I'm using a square to make sure that everything is ends up being actually square. And once you have your square lines, you can start taking your measurements off of those lines just like I'm doing right here. And then I'll follow back up and then square up that end right there. And then what you gotta do is you wanna set your height for your box going off that original line you made there, put two dots there, and then you will just connect the dots with that same piece of trim. That will give you a square. Once you have everything all lined up, all I do is I just take my angle grinder with the cutoff wheel and just follow all the lines, cutting everything out nice and easy. So let me break some old man logic down to you guys here. So. In the beginning, I said how expensive these ride boxes are to buy. So kind of half the reason I wanted to build one, but the real reason I needed to build one is this box is actually going to go on a new sled that I'm building. So I had to have a specific size. But if you were building a rod box because you think it's going to be cheaper than actual buying a rod box, because they are very expensive. Um, first of all, I already have more in cost in aluminum without having to buy the flashing than I did for the actual Ego Claw ice rod box, which was the best value one I found. Um, but then I also, I, I needed to grind kind of these inside corners, right? Because they look like crap. I need the paneling to sit flush in there. So I needed to grind them off. I needed a die grinder. Didn't have one. So, uh... Had to go to the store and buy a die grinder. So, which by the way, that die grinder costs about as much as the box would have. So realistically, man logic said build it, you'll build it cheaper, but then you have to spend more on tools than you would have built. You know what, that's just man logic. So, I'm gonna use the die grinder. I'm gonna clean up all of these inside corners now on these things, and then I'll be able to start putting those uh, inside panels in. So my die grinder solution for the inside corners didn't work too well because the grinding stone kept getting clogged with aluminum. I think I have the wrong grinding thing. I don't know. But now I have a die grinder, so that will come handy. I was able to get it to the point where I'm able to actually continue on with the project. So now it's time to install the panels. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to run just a very thin bead of silicone around where the sil where the panels will place in. I'm gonna do that to actually hold, so they'll hold consistently. And then I will pop rivet a bunch on there to hold everything together like better than just silicone. Silicone's just there so it, it can't wobble too much. I'm hoping that I can silicone it and pop rivet while the silicone's still wet. I don't know if that's gonna work too well.
So it's it's like working, but it's kind of finally figured out the correct drill size, and that helps quite a bit. But this is gonna be kind of brutal with this aluminum being so thin. Good, and I just gouged the aluminum really bad right there. So that was pretty cool. I think it's gonna hold, but it, it is just, just not fun to do. All right, so if you look at this side, you can see all the waviness in the aluminum. I did anticipate that that would happen with being such thin aluminum. Um, and then this side right here, I'm trying something different. So this side hasn't been riveted yet. What I'm doing is I'm allowing the silicone to dry and hoping that that will hold it a little bit better and hopefully that'll minimize that distortion that we have on this side. But I mean, right now with having to do this side still, I think it a box like it's supposed to be but uh, if you were to build one of these what I would do is I would keep the aluminum frame I think the aluminum frame is a good idea and it does seem very strong if you cannot weld aluminum I mean I can't either but I did but if you can't use the aluminum like that I would use aluminum and I would just buy little L brackets and then I would bolt those in there uh, what I would do and I, I really if I, if I didn't silicone this thing I think I would do it now and if I wasn't so financially invested in the aluminum, is I would get big totes because this little plastic that came off the totes, it's strong and it's really, it's in there, it's not coming out and it's not gonna have those weird ripples and stuff like that and it's still really light. I think that's the way that I would go, but uh, we're gonna wait for the silicone to dry up on this in the lid and then I'm gonna try doing rivets on that to see if that kind of helps again with that little distortion. Just wanna plug this in the video real quick. With the box being so shiny from all the aluminum, uh, on a sunny day out on the ice, it may blind people. Uh, if that happens, I will paint it then. I will address the situation then. Um, if it doesn't happen and it's not a problem, then I won't deal with it. But I like the way it looks. So before anybody throws anything about it getting all blindy people, I'm aware. And if, again, if it is a problem, I'll address it. Now back to me building this box. So I have never used this many rivets on anything. And this box alone for being so small took over 125 rivets that I had to drill and then rivet by hand. So the lid turned out absolutely wonderful. Very, very happy with the lid. The rest of it, well, it's together. But now we gotta move on to, to making this thing into an actual flippable lid. So we're just going to use some hinges and a couple. I was gonna use one latch, I had the other one I'll probably put two, both of them on there. And now we're just gonna pop rivet those right along the edges to make this thing into an actual box with a flippable lid. Pretty simple. Whenever you're doing hinges on a lid like this or on any door, what you want to do is you want to measure from both sides. So you make sure that your hinges are the same amount from the top and the bottom or each side. You know what I mean? So that they're spaced evenly. So then you take your hinge and all I do is I'm going to set it exactly where I want it. And then I'm going to actually mark with a Sharpie where I need to drill my holes for my rivets on this. Then once I have those holes marked, I just go through and as I've done about a hundred times already, I just drill holes in the aluminum which will then allow me to pop rivet these hinges on. And one more. And, oh, one more. There it is. There it is. So then I do the same thing, same idea with the latches. You just kind of measure, space, mark, drill, rivet. Same thing. As you can see here, I have that blue painter's tape there that I was actually using to help hold the box shut. That was a big help. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on trying to set, to see how these rods are gonna sit in there. So what I'm doing right now is trying to deter, yep, this, try this way, nope. We're trying to determine how I'm gonna actually have these rods sitting in here. Okay, flip it back over. What I wanted is I wanted the handles to be sitting outside so the thing didn't sit all weird inside there. It sits a lot more flush against the back. And, uh, oh, yep, drop that right there. So what that is right there, is my buddy's son actually printed 3D printed those for me. It's just rod holder pieces that I cut up. Now, all I'm going to do is same thing like I did with the hinges and the latches. I'm going to find out where I want them to sit. I'm going to mark with a Sharpie um, the whole locations, and then I'm just going to drill and rivet those in. Now, this actually isn't even the setup that I continued to use because it didn't like this setup. I ended up drilling everything out and putting it in a lot better, which you'll see at the end of the video. But I didn't like this setup, but I didn't film that, so this is 
basically how to do it if you wanted to do the same setup. And to rivet these things on, I actually had to rivet from the back side instead of going through the front because obviously with those clips, I couldn't get the rivet gun in there, but that's kind of how I did it. And they, they stayed on pretty well for being such flimsy aluminum. So this thing is 30 inches long. It is five and a half inches deep, and then it is nine inches overall height. Uh, as you can see, you can get two poles in here. I got my jig box and I got my bait box. And also, if you really wanted to, you can fit a third pole if need be. Again, uh, this is how I'm gonna have it mounted on the sled. And make sure that you guys do subscribe because the next video that comes out will be building the whole sled that this is actually going to attach onto. Thanks guys for watching. I'll see you guys hopefully on that video.